In this video, I want to show you just a few things as you're getting to know your graphing calculator. Um, and we'll first start by showing you simply how to turn this thing on and off. Um, and I will note that even though you see a TI-83 on the screen, the same keystrokes that we use in this video can be used on a TI-84 as well. So to turn the calculator on, you'll notice an on button down here in the lower left hand corner. That's how you turn the calculator on. And then notice that there's a word off in yellow here right above the on key. And um, you'll see that several buttons have these yellow commands located above them. Um, just general rule of thumb, in order to access those yellow commands above the keys, all you need to do is type the second key first and then the button. So for example, to turn the calculator off, to access this off command, we will click the second button and then the on button and that should turn your calculator off. Um, also, just before we go any further, if you are using a TI-84, all of the keys are laid out the same that you see here, but the coloring may be a bit different. For example, on my TI-84, the wording above the keys that you see here in yellow is actually blue and the second key is also blue. So the same keystrokes even though the coloring may be a little bit different. Okay. <clears throat> To just go through some basics, I've got here eight examples that we will walk through. The first one being 96 plus 3. Um, so just to use your calculator on a very basic level, um, to do this problem, you would click the, the 9, then the 6, and then notice all of your operator buttons over here on the right-hand side. You have division, multiplication, subtraction, and addition. So we will type the plus sign and then the number three. And to get the result, you hit enter. And notice the answer shows up here on the right side of the screen. The second example involves negative and positive numbers. And the reason that I wanted to do this example was to emphasize the idea that on the graphing calculator, you have two separate buttons for subtraction and for a negative sign. So in order to denote subtraction, you'll use this button here on the right hand side. But in order to denote a negative number, you need to utilize this key that's right below the three. So to type in the second example, the negative four, we will use the negative sign and then the four and then the multiplication sign and then the one and the three and click enter for a result of negative 52. Sometimes when you want to type a negative number and you inadvertently use the subtraction sign, the calculator may give you an error um, on the screen. Um, so it does take a little bit of time to get used to the idea that, um, that you will not use the subtraction sign for a negative number um, and that you need to use the negative sign below the three. But um, eventually it becomes very second nature and um, it will not cause you a problem. So the third example, we have negative 3 minus a negative 9. Um, so to start, we will use the negative sign to type the negative 3, and then the subtraction sign to denote the subtraction. And then notice that our TI-83 or 84 have parentheses keys above the 8 and the 9 that we can use to type in parentheses. Um, so we will use an open parenthesis, the negative key, and then the 9 to denote the negative 9. We close the parenthesis and then click enter for our answer of 6. So one cool thing about the graphing calculator is that it understands the operations um, involving positive and negative numbers. So for example, in this case, the calculator knows to change that subtraction of a negative to a plus sign and um, we get the answer of 6. So um, it's pretty cool that, um, you know, sometimes it can be challenging to work with negative numbers and the graphing calculator is a really cool tool in order to double check your results when you're, when you're working with positives and negatives. Okay, so on to the fourth example. This is one of my favorite things about the graphing calculator. We are going to subtract 3 fourths minus 1 fifth. Um, as a general rule of thumb, anytime you work with fractions, I recommend that you put them inside parentheses so that the calculator is very clear on what is involved in the fraction. Um, so to start, I'll type an open parenthesis and then the 3 
In order to denote the fraction bar, we'll use the division key. I'll type the 4, close the parenthesis, use the subtraction sign to denote subtraction, and then I will type the 1 fifth also in parentheses using the division key for the fraction bar. And then I hit enter for the result. Now the calculator defaults to a decimal answer, 0.55, but, and this is what I alluded to when I said that um, this would illustrate something very cool about the graphing calculator. The graphing calculator will turn this decimal answer into a simplified fraction answer with just a couple clicks of the keyboard. So check this out. Locate the math key right here on the right hand side of the screen or on the right side of the keyboard and click the math key and you have a bunch of different options here which you can use the down and up arrows to scroll through but the option that we actually want is the first one this first option is saying that it will change our answer into a fraction so once we highlight the option that we want and in this case it's option one we click the enter button it takes us back to the original screen and the calculator is telling us what it's about to do. So it's telling us it's about to take our answer to a fraction. And when we click enter, we get the simplified fraction version of this answer as 11 20ths. So you skip the whole process of needing to find common denominators. The calculator does all of that for you, which is so very cool. <laughs> Okay, so let's hit our last few examples here. Um, parts E and F are related to exponents. And um, so we'll, we'll, we'll do part E here as 3 squared. In order to, to um, denote exponents on the graphing calculator, the most efficient way, I think, is to use the caret key, which is located right here above the division key. So in order to do 3 squared, we will hit the 3 and then we'll click the caret button to denote an exponent and then we type the exponent of 2 and click enter to get our answer of 9. Now the other way to do this if you have a squared power is to use the x squared key located right here and how we would do that is to simply type 3 and then the x squared key notice it gives us that 2 exponent and then click enter for an answer of 9. And then um, if we look at part F, um, the quantity negative 5 all raised to the third power. Um, again, we have parentheses on our graph and calculator to type this in. So I'll type it in as open parentheses. Use the negative key to denote that it's a negative number. Type the 5. Close the parentheses. And then again, you can use the caret key to denote the exponent of of 3, click enter, and your answer shows up as negative 125. The other way that you can get a third power, just so you know, is to go back to the math key, click the math key, and notice that option 3 is a power of 3. So we can use the down arrow to go to option 3, click enter, it takes us back to our main screen and I just realized, um, let me um, back up here just one second. I'm going to clear this out. What I forgot to do was to type the base of negative 5, so let me do that real quick. Type the base of negative 5 and then hit the math key. Choose option 3. Click enter. Now, here we go. We have negative 5 raised to the third power and when we click enter, we get negative 125. Just a couple things before we move on, a couple little tricks um, that I want to show you. Um, notice that our calculator is really just keeping a scrolling um, run of all the calculations that we're doing. When we use the up arrow, it does not allow us to, um, I'm clicking the up arrow here, and it, it does not allow us to go back and reaccess anything that we've done. But there's a really cool thing that happens when you click second enter. And that is that the calculator will recall your last um, calculation. So if I click second enter, it will go back to the calculation that I just performed, the negative 5 to the third power. And it will actually allow me to edit this. So let's say we wanted to take um, 
instead of negative 5 to the third power, let's say we wanted to take negative 6 to the third power. I can use the arrow keys to navigate back onto the um, calculation, change that 5 to a 6, and then hit enter to get that result. And the calculator actually saves several of your previous commands. So I'm going to click second enter a few times so that you see this. So it it um, brought back my negative 6 to the third power when I did the second enter once. Now I'll do it again and notice it will revert back to the second to last thing that I did, the negative 5 to the third power. Um, notice that when I do this again it'll go back to um, what I typed there, negative 5 caret to the third power and it keeps a little bit of a memory there. And this can be really handy. For example, if you're doing the same kind of calculation over and over and over and you just need to change some numbers, this is a way that you can do that very quickly without having to type everything else in again. Um, it's also really handy if you make a mistake on something. So um, if I had done 3 squared and I really had meant to do 4 squared, I could use the second enter um, keystroke and then use my arrow keys to go back and change whatever I needed to change and then click enter for the answer. So that's pretty cool to know. It can be very handy. Um, and then the other thing that I'll show you just before we move on to the last couple examples is the clear button located right here above the caret key. Um, if you just get tired of looking at all the previous things that you've done, you can hit the clear key and it will clear everything out and give you a fresh blank screen. Okay, let's do our last couple examples here. So the square root of 9, um, you may have already noticed the square root is above the x squared key. To access it, we will click the second key and then the x squared key, and then we will type what's underneath the square root, and then close the parenthesis, click enter, that will give us the answer of 3. To do a cubed root, like the cube root of 27, we're going to go back to this math key, click the math key and then notice that option 4 is a cubed root so I'll use my arrow keys scroll down to the 4 um, click enter to select that and then type in what's underneath that cubed root so 27 close parenthesis and then enter